My name is Megan Mitchie, and I am the first author of our paper entitled Cyanin Conformational Restraint in the Far Red Range, which I worked on while I was a postback at the NIH in Dr. Martin Sherman's lab. An important goal in optical imaging is to make tools that better visualize structures in complex living environments. Fluorescence imaging experiments have been very useful in this context. Fluorescence-based experiments use molecules that are activated by exposure to a certain wavelength of light. Once activated, the molecules, or fluorophores, emit light of different, longer wavelengths that allow researchers to locate structures that are labeled with a specific dye. These tools are important for a better understanding in both experimental and clinical applications, such as fluorescence-guided surgery. While these techniques work well for cells and tissues examined outside of the body, visualizing fluorescence in living organisms is difficult because light from most existing fluorophores does not pass through tissue well. Most currently available fluorescent dyes work in the green and blue range of the visible light spectrum. Our lab has been focused on fluorophores that emit longer wavelengths of light in the far red and near infrared range, longer than 650 nanometers. We are interested in these longer wavelengths because they are better able to penetrate through tissue, which is something everyone has seen when you hold a flashlight to your hand and the red light passes through it. However, most fluorophores that emit light in these wavelengths are not bright enough for biological applications. Figuring out how to make molecules that are both bright enough and emit long wavelengths of light has been a long-standing puzzle for chemists. In fact, most fluorophores used today, including those in clinical practice, were taken from very different other areas, such as the dye industry, and as a result have significant limitations for biological use. Most of our work has been on a class of fluorescent probes called the cyanins, sometimes called the psi dyes, which have strong light-absorbing properties. However, as fluorophores, they are not very bright, which limits their use for addressing many important problems. Our lab speculated that the reason cyanins are not very bright is because these molecules rotate after they absorb light. We made the hypothesis that restricting their ability to rotate by attaching a rigid structure would make them brighter. Using tricks from modern organic chemistry, we built a system of chemical rings and attached them to the far red sci-fi fluorophores to form what we call conformationally restrained sci-5, or sci-5b for short. There are two key steps in the synthetic approach used to make these molecules. In the first step, a chemical reaction called olefin metathesis makes a precursor molecule. This reaction was developed over the last 20 years to attach a key reactive functional group that enables the cyclization step. In the second step, this precursor molecule is exposed to strongly acidic conditions, which drives the formation of four rings in a single step. This is an exciting chemical reaction because it involves forming five bonds, including two carbon-oxygen bonds and three carbon-carbon bonds, the latter of which are often hard to form. With this novel synthesis complete, we were delighted to discover that the addition of these new ring structures made the fluorophores over 400% brighter. In addition, these molecules also have a longer fluorescence lifetime, which will be useful for visualizing time-dependent changes in tissues and cells. In addition to being brighter, conformationally restrained Psi-5s have an improved ability to turn from on to off, which makes their signal easier to distinguish from the background. More specifically, these new dyes can be reduced by sodium borohydride, and this gain of an electron turns them into a dark state. This dark state can be recovered to the on state with UV light. Surprisingly, these rings make this on and off process occur much more efficiently than it does for cyanins lacking the rings. Our lab is currently carrying out mechanistic studies to better understand these differences. These new properties prove to be quite useful for super-resolution light microscopy, SMLM, imaging applications. In SMLM, molecules in a tissue sample, such as tumor cell surface markers, are fluorescently labeled and turned on to a bright state one at a time, as is shown in this movie. This allows researchers to count them and determine their location with nanometer precision. This approach has been used to localize structures both inside and outside of cells, as is seen in this example, imaging actin with these new dyes. Our lab is currently developing variants of these dyes that emit even longer, more deeply penetrating near-infrared wavelengths, which is challenging because more rings must be created.
The challenge is worthwhile, however, as fluorophores that can penetrate tissue more deeply will be useful for clinical techniques such as fluorescence-guided surgery. In fluorescence-guided surgery, these dyes can be used to help surgeons identify sensitive tissues to avoid, like nerves or the biliary tree, and to help them identify tumors so they can successfully remove all of the cancerous cells. Ongoing studies in our lab are working to synthesize molecules specifically designed for these applications. Going forward, these newly synthesized Sci-5 far-red fluorescent probes are brighter and more stable than the currently available counterparts, which means they could be used for imaging live tissue over long time frames. These promising properties point to several applications, such as tracking tumor cells in live tissues, which could lead to a better understanding of how cancer behaves in a living system. U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, National Institutes of Health, National Cancer Institute, cancer.gov, 1-800-4-CANCER, produced October 2019.